Hi, I'm Elena. Welcome back to Find the Answers. This is the third in a series of tutorials on conducting a comprehensive literature search. We're using a scenario based on the ILP assignment that medical students complete in Determinants of Community Health Year 2 or DOC2. In the first two tutorials, we formed our search question, what is the effect of wearing a helmet on incidents of head injuries in people playing hockey? We also learned about databases like Medline where we can conduct comprehensive searches for evidence. In this tutorial, we'll run a search in Ovid Medline using subject headings. Let's go into Medline through the Gerstein homepage, library.utoronto.ca slash Gerstein. The link to Medline is under Major Resources. On the next page, we see links to all the different Ovid databases and tools. Medline is listed first. You can decide which date range to choose. It's always safe to choose 1950 to the present and then limit to a more recent date range if it makes sense to your topic. Unlike in Google or PubMed where you enter what you're looking for in one search, in Ovid databases you enter one concept at a time. Let's try hockey. Type it into the box and press enter or click search. The database looks through the mesh thesaurus and uses an algorithm to suggest some subject headings. If you don't see anything that looks good, try another search for a synonym of your concept. Sometimes there just isn't a mesh term for a topic, for instance if it's extremely specific or a new topic. In these cases you can use a keyword search. We talk about keyword searching in the next tutorial in this series. Here hockey actually is the subject heading. Click on the corresponding blue eye box to the right to see the scope note. The scope note gives you a brief definition of the term and some indication of when to use it. The scope note also gives you a history of the term and in some cases tells you that for certain dates you need to search another term but here it lets us know that articles about hockey were tagged with the term sports until 1990 but that those articles have been re-tagged with the term hockey. The used for terms are a list of words that indexers look for in order to tag an article with the mesh heading hockey. This can be useful in a systematic search for building a list of keywords to use. There are only so many ways to say hockey though. Based on the scope note, I think this subject heading is appropriate for our search, but I'm thinking maybe we should go a little broader and also include more sports. Let's use the previous page link at the top of the page to go back. It's important to use the internal navigation buttons rather than your browser's back button since the database can freeze otherwise. The next step is to check what's called the mesh tree. Click on the term on this page to see the tree. The brief view of the tree shows how your selected mesh heading fits into the mesh hierarchy, what the immediate broader and narrower terms are. Hockey falls under sports, but there are no narrower terms. If you click to see the full tree, you can see even more of the picture. In the full tree view, scroll down to where your term is highlighted. Hockey falls under the broader mesh heading sports and sports has several narrower mesh headings including football and other contact sports. At this point you can decide which sports to include or whether you'd like to look at all sports. If you want to look at all sports you can click sports and then click the box to the right that corresponds with exploding. Simply clicking sports includes all articles that are tagged with this general term but in order to include all the narrower terms you need to explode. Although I'm really only interested in contact sports, I'm going to start broad and explode sports. When I combine this with my head injury and helmet terms, I think we'll cut out the articles on swimming and running. We librarians always say, when in doubt, explode. And you can always go back and modify. Click continue to go on. The next screen is the subheading display. Subheadings can be really useful if you're doing a quick search, they're not a good idea in comprehensive searches, however. They're not applied as systematically as mesh headings and can limit your search too quickly. Let's click continue to skip these. So we have one item in our search history now, and although the number of results is huge, 
Remember, we've still got our other PICO concepts to search and combine, so the number will be a lot more manageable and the results a lot more relevant. Let's jump now to our outcome PICO element, head injuries. Just type it into the box and click search. This maps to the mesh term craniocerebral trauma. Let's click on the little blue box again to see the scope note. Here we've got a pretty straightforward definition. The term was added in 2000, but can be used to find articles as old as 1966. Let's go back to the previous page. And here, let's click on the term to see the tree. Craniocerebral trauma shows up in two contexts, or two branches of the tree, under trauma nervous system and also under wounds and injuries. Either context would be interesting for this topic. Let's click full tree and follow the trauma nervous system contexts. So here we see the various narrower subject headings under craniocerebral trauma. Where there's a plus beside a term, that indicates that there are narrower subject headings that are hidden or collapsed. Let's click the plus beside brain injuries, for instance. Several injuries are listed here, some of which we're interested in, for example, concussion, and some of which we're not, for example, shaken baby syndrome. But to save myself some time and to play it safe, I'm going to explode craniocerebral trauma with the knowledge that combining it with my sports term will exclude the articles about injuries I'm not interested in. Again, let's skip past the subheadings, just clicking continue. Once I have a couple of searches done, I like to test the waters by combining the terms, even though I haven't tackled all my concepts. This way I can get an idea of how well my search terms are working and how much is out there on my topic. A note on combining search terms. When you have two searches that are for the same concept or for synonymous terms, you want all the articles from both searches. In this case, you combine the terms with OR. When you combine searches for different concepts, you want articles that talk about both concepts at the same time. In this case, you want to combine the terms with AND. So back in our search, we're combining two different concepts. So we'll click the boxes beside sports and craniocerebral trauma in the search history then below in the history, click where it says Combine Selections with AND. Over 2,000 results. That's good. If I had 5, I would worry about my search terms. If I had 50, I would maybe stop here and go through the articles. Since I have a high number, I'm going to continue and search my intervention, Helmets. I'll type in Helmets and click Enter. This maps to the mesh heading, Head Protective Devices. This seems like a good fit. Let's click to see the scope note. No warning bells here. Let's go back to the previous page. And then click on the term to see the tree. Our term is listed twice under the broader mesh heading, Protective Devices. This tells me that Protective Devices is under two contexts, but I don't really care about that. Let's check the full tree. Here, there are tons of types of protective devices, but I'm going to stick with head protective devices. Let's select it and click continue. And again, continue past the subheadings. Now, we can combine this with our other search terms again, using AND to combine, since they're different concepts. And now we have around 500 hits. If this search were for a systematic review, I'd go on to also search using keywords to retrieve any articles that might have been missed when indexing articles with mesh headings. If I'm looking to target a specific methodology, I would use a quality filter to narrow my results. In this tutorial, we ran a search in Ovid Medline using subject headings. In the next tutorial, we'll learn some advanced techniques to improve our search using keywords, quality filters, and limits.